gamer grade. What is up guys, as usual it's Jay, and in this video I'll be demonstrating a step-by-step -step walkthrough to complete No Way Out from the Ghost Survivors DLC for Resident Evil 2. This guide will show you the easiest way to unlock the Gunslinger record, which unlocks the Cat Ears accessory, which in turn, when worn, will allow infinite ammo for all four DLC missions. If that sounds good to you, then make sure to punch that thumbs up real good. The most important things to note here are how the attack waves are structured, and what you can expect from each wave in terms of enemies and items. Check out this chart, which shows you the number and type of zombies to expect in each wave. I'll be showing additional charts before each wave begins, detailing the contents and number of backpack zombies and explosive zombies to expect, as well as where and when they appear specific to each wave. So make sure to keep watching to maximise your chances of beating this challenge. As you can see from the chart, there are a total of 100 zombies that need to be taken down. The first 5 waves of 50 come in hordes of 10, and this first half of the challenge can be easily beaten with careful and strategic planning, which will be detailed step by step throughout the video. However, once you hit the final 50 zombies, waves 6 and 7, which make up the second half of the challenge, the tables turn and more luck is involved. However, with the information you'll gather from this walkthrough and the detailed charts displayed before each wave, your chances of success will dramatically increase. The second most important thing you need to be aware of are the herbal recipe mixtures and how to use them to your advantage to overcome this particular challenge. Understanding this mechanic can literally mean the difference between success or failure. Check out this chart which displays all the possible recipes available to you, not only for this mission but for the entire game globally. The most noteworthy recipe is the green, blue and red mixture, which I shall refer to as GBR from now on. Once consumed, this mixture will fully recover your health and remove poison if you're intoxicated. It then applies two additional defensive effects over a three minute period. These are damage reduction and poison resistance. The damage reduction comes in the form of an additional 50% HP, and the poison resistance is unlimited for the whole three minutes. This three minute timer is represented by a green shield icon displayed at the lower right of the screen, which slowly empties of colour as the three minute timer depletes. You are given the first GBR mix at the start of the mission, and given the opportunity to create a second GBR mix at the start of wave 3, so make sure to do this when the time comes. You are also given the chance to make an optional third GBR mix during the final wave 7. I will prompt all of these opportune moments during the walkthrough. As long as you make good use of the first two GBRs, feel free to use the rest of the herbs as and when you need them for survival. It's worth recapping here that the only mandatory goal required, besides surviving, to achieve the Gunslinger record for infinite ammo is to not use more than 60 handgun bullets throughout the entire challenge. To check your current bullet usage, simply bring up the pause menu and click on the records menu for the Ghost Survivors DLC. Then scroll all the way down to the Gunslinger entry near the bottom. Your current bullet usage will be displayed on the right hand side of the screen as shown here. Ok, kicking off with wave 1, zombies 1 to 10 consist of just standard zombies. In this initial wave, we have one backpack zombie who enters the room at the rear door and drops a green and blue herb as well as a flash grenade. Make sure to save the two herbs for your second GBR mix in wave 3. There is also a single explosive zombie who enters the room at the front door and needs to be strategically dropped near the counter to take down four zombies in one shot. Take down the four zombies that enter the room at the front door. They can take anywhere from one to five shots to take down. Don't worry if you miss a shot or two as I've demonstrated here as perfection is not required. Then take out the zombies that enter at the rear, looting the contents of the backpack and saving the herbs for your second GBR mix in wave 3. <laughs> Thank you. 
take down the zombie at the front door and let the explosive zombie enter the room. You want to strategically place the canister by shooting his legs. Around here is okay. You basically want to position the canister so the explosion will cover the width of the room when it pops. Okay, now wave 2 begins. Zombies 11 to 20 consist of standard zombies as well as armoured zombies. In this second wave, we have a backpack zombie that enters the front door who drops a spark shot. Then shortly after, we have an explosive zombie who also enters at the front door. And finally, a second backpack zombie who enters at the rear door with a shotgun. Stand at the corner of this aisle and wait for the two zombies entering from the front and rear doors to approach. Just before they reach you, run behind the counter and up the first aisle to draw in the backpack zombie hanging around the front door. Then turn around and wait for them to approach, so they gather near the canister. Then shoot it, hopefully taking down all four zombies in the blast. Loop the spark shot from the dropped backpack and equip it. Then take down the first zombie entering the room at the front door. Then quickly run to the back door to try and take down all four zombies entering at the rear. Remember, you can move while using the spark shot, so long as you keep your crosshair on the target. You don't need to keep the trigger held down, just the aim button. Moving will allow you to avoid any potential threats outside of your view. As if you get attacked during the charge, no damage will be dealt and you will lose a spark shot round, which is not ideal. Loot the shotgun from the backpack, but keep your handgun equipped. the explosive zombie around here to take down the three poison zombies that enter the room at the rear door at the start of the next wave. Okay, now wave 3 begins. Zombies 21 to 30 consist of standard zombies as well as poison zombies. In this third wave, we have a single backpack zombie who drops an MQ-11 mini submachine gun. No explosive zombies enter the room in this third wave. Stand a few feet in front of the canister and wait for the three zombies to enter the room. Let the first one bite you as this will entice all three of them to enter and gather nearer the canister. Then back off and retreat behind the canister a few feet, luring the zombies closer. Then quickly pop the canister to barbecue all three. You can also do this down the aisle that runs next to the rear door, which is probably better as it's a tighter and longer space, better suited for this kind of setup. So feel free to give that option a go if this position proves troublesome. Now is a good time to use your first GBR mix, as it will not only remove the poison just inflicted upon you, but will also prevent you from being poisoned by the several poisonous zombies about to enter the room. Keep an eye on your protection meter displayed at the bottom right of the screen. As long as this is up, you can safely headshot all poison zombies up close and personal without being poisoned. Equip your shotgun and dispatch the zombies entering the room at the front door. Loot the MQ-11 from the backpack, then head to the back door to dispatch more poison zombies. Once all four shotgun shells have been expended, discard the shotgun to free up more inventory space. If you still have it, equip the spark shot and use up the remaining rounds. Take out any remaining zombies thereafter using the handgun or MQ-11, conserving as much ammo as possible. Okay, now we begin wave 4. Zombies 31 to 40 consist of just standard zombies, as well as a single palehead at the very end, who is the last zombie to enter the room. In this fourth wave, we have a single backpack zombie who enters the room at the back door, and drops a red herb, a green herb, and a flash grenade. 
make sure to use the red herb from this pack to create your second GBR mix. We then have two explosive zombies enter the room at the front door, who need to be strategically positioned for multiple takedowns. Head to the rear door and take down the backpack zombie entering the room. Leave the other two zombies alive for now. Loot the dropped backpack and create your second GBR mix. Take the two zombies from the back door down to the first aisle of the shop and wait for the first explosive zombie to enter the room at the front door. Now let any one of the zombies grab you so they all gather around the explosive zombie. After the attack, pop the canister to hopefully take down around six zombies. Try not to miss the first time like I did. Now we need to do the exact same thing with the second explosive zombie, taking out the remaining zombies as well as the pale head that enters at the rear door. Baiting him down to the counter area seems to be the most effective solution. Hopefully you will have some Uzi rounds left for an easy prey and spray. If not, don't worry, just use the handgun. Just make sure you haven't exceeded the 60 bullet limit if Gunslinger is your goal. Okay, wave 5 will now begin. Zombies 41 to 50 consist of standard, armoured and poison zombies. There are three backpack zombies in this fifth wave. The first enters at the front door and drops a flamethrower. The second enters at the rear door and drops a spark shot. And the third enters at the counter door and drops the rocket launcher with two rounds. There are no explosive zombies in this fifth wave. Stand close to the front door and wait for the first backpack zombie to enter the room. If you have any remaining Uzi rounds, then use them to take it down. If not, then simply let the backpack zombie attack you as soon as it opens the door, to make it drop its pack. This is a good tactic to remember when low on ammunition, since backpack zombies will immediately drop their packs as soon as they attack. This means no ammunition is required to loot them. As long as you have enough health to withstand the damage, the contents are yours. Loot the flamethrower from the pack and equip it, then discard the Uzi if it's empty. Quickly flame the zombies entering the room at the front door. It's worth noting that the flamethrower will deal a small amount of damage over time, so long as the flames are visibly burning on the zombies. Periodically puffing the flames onto the zombies will maximise this bonus damage, while conserving fuel. As expected, holding down the trigger will dramatically reduce the takedown time, but will expend more fuel. Now quickly head to the back door and try to take down all three zombies entering the room with continuous flames. The backpack zombie here drops a spark shot. If you have space in your inventory, make sure to pick it up. The third backpack zombie now enters the room at the counter door and will drop the rocket launcher. You don't need to pick it up now like I did as it's much more useful for the final two waves 6 and 7. It's actually preferable to loot the spark shot first from the second backpack zombie that just entered the room at the back door. Any backpacks you leave unlooted will remain available at their dropped locations, either until you die or until you complete the mission. Now flame the two poison zombies entering the room at the front door, taking them down quickly. By this time, two more poison zombies will have entered the room at the rear door. So track them down and give them the same barbecue treatment. Try not to get poisoned like I did, which forced me to use my GBR mix shortly after. However, any point after wave 5 begins is actually a good time to use that second GBR mix. Okay, now we begin wave 6. Zombies 51 to 70 consist of all four zombie types. This is the point where things can become out of control, so expect some overwhelming situations. The key to success is to never stop fighting. In this sixth wave, we have an explosive zombie who enters the room at the rear door. Then a backpack zombie enters at the counter door who drops a green herb, a blue herb, as well as the enhanced shotgun with eight rounds. Then a second backpack zombie who enters at the rear door who drops a flamethrower. A third backpack zombie who enters at the front door who drops an MQ-11 Uzi. And finally, a second explosive zombie who enters at the counter door to hopefully help clear things up. Ideally at this point you want to have at least three rounds in your spark shot. 
The first shot to take out this pale head coming in at the front door, a second shot to take down the pale head that enters at the counter door shortly after, then a third shot for the pale head that enters at the rear door. Due to me picking up the rocket too early, I didn't have room to pick up the spark shot. So I just expended my flame rounds to take down the first pale head entering at the front door. I then used the explosive zombie entering at the rear door to take down the two remaining pale heads. As I just demonstrated, it doesn't need to be a perfectly executed plan, with improvisation and consistent trial and error being the key to winning this latter half of the challenge. Try and take out as many enemies as you can with the spark shot. The backpack zombie entering at the counter door holds herbs as well as the enhanced shotgun with 8 rounds. If you get completely overwhelmed with multiple zombies, then feel free to whip out the rocket launcher. At this stage, I anticipated I was going to get surrounded, so I found a gap and ran to an area where several zombies were situated, to purposefully provoke an attack. During an attack, nearby zombies will always quickly gather around to join in the fun, so use this mechanic to your tactical advantage. After the attack, I let rip with the rocket launcher, killing six zombies in one blast, which is okay. If you can be more efficient and catch a few more zombies in the blast, it will just make things easier for you moving forward. I didn't have enough room for the shotgun and needed to use the remaining rounds in the spark shot, so I left the shotgun to loot later. I wanted to save the remaining rocket for when I hit the final wave, when it goes completely berserk. This second backpack zombie enters the room at the rear door and drops a flamethrower which I couldn't pick up so I carried on expending the remaining spark shot rounds to free up the inventory space. Try not to be too wasteful and miss two shots like I did. After discarding the spark shot and picking up the flamethrower, I used the first of my two flash grenades to save being attacked, as I knew the flamethrower I just picked up would quickly set it off, allowing me to then flame several stunned zombies in the process. It turns out the second explosive zombie that enters the room at the counter door was down this aisle, so made it quick and easy to get things under control, including taking down the third backpack zombie that comes in at the front door who drops the Uzi. Okay, now we begin the final wave 7. Zombies 71 to 100 consist of all four zombie types. In this seventh wave, we have three backpack zombies and three explosive zombies. The first backpack zombie enters the room at the counter door and drops a green herb, a blue herb, as well as an Uzi. The second backpack zombie enters the room at the front door and drops a red and green herb, basically of full health. As you can see, the first and second backpack zombies will allow you to craft a third GBR mix midway through the final wave, so make sure to craft and consume if given the chance. Then the final backpack zombie of the entire mission enters at the front door dropping a spark shot very handy. The three explosive zombies enter at the rear door, front door, then finally the counter door respectively. The first zombie to enter the room is an explosive zombie at the rear door. Make sure to bait him down the aisle nearer the counter where all the zombies are entering, then take him out. I managed to take down six zombies which is good, but almost died so had to use my final healing mix at this stage. The backpack zombie that enters at the counter door drops a green and blue herb as well as an Uzi. Here I managed to loot the shotgun which was dropped back in wave 6. Unfortunately, I can't loot any items from the second pack due to inventory space, so I decided to discard the handgun. I had 11 bullets remaining before hitting 60, but I was confident with the remaining firepower at my disposal for the remainder of the mission, I didn't need those 11 bullets. Also, I knew a red herb was about to drop through the front door, so I had the potential to craft a final defensive GBR mix, which would dramatically bolster my survival. I then used my final flash grenade in an attempt to stun and burn several zombies, which was partly successful. <laughs> For 
some reason, I decided to use my GB mix here, and in hindsight, I should have waited for that red herb. I now grab the Uzi from the dropped pack and clear up using the shotgun. I decided to use the final rocket here, taking down three zombies in total. Two pale heads and an armoured zombie. Probably not the best use, but turned out to be good enough. The red and green herb backpack zombie now enters the room at the front door, allowing you to create that GBR mix if you are able to save that GB mix from the first backpack. For some reason, I never actually looted the pack and just left it sitting by the front door. At this stage, it's ideal to have the flamethrower, so you can ignite the explosive zombie hanging out at the back of the pack to take out all four zombies coming in at the front door. Then flame the final explosive zombie of the entire mission, who enters at the counter door to take down another four zombies. That leaves four zombies to complete the mission. The final backpack zombie of the entire mission will enter at the front door and drops a spark shot, making things super easy for me to clear up and complete the challenge. I've also uploaded guides for the other DLC missions with a similar style of commentary, so if you found this guide enjoyable, make sure to give those other ones a try, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also make sure to check out my guide on infinite weapons, detailing everything you need to know to unlock all five. You don't want to miss it. If you learned a thing or two from this video, please punch that thumbs up and consider subscribing if you would like to see more content from Game of Grade. Every like and sub helps me tremendously and will allow me to make more kick-ass videos in future. I'm Jay, peace out and I'll see you in the next one.